you don't always have to rush in when you've got lots of other priorities. And Chelsea's priority was clearing out the, the dead wood, clearing out the unwanted players, clearing out players that they wanted to keep, who wanted to leave the, the Kai Havertz and the Mounts, etc. And and I think that they're now focusing very much on on bringing people in. And I think if today Ch- uh, Ch- uh, Liverpool put a bid in for Caicedo that was close to being accepted, I think Chelsea would move. Does that make sense? Um, they they do need to start bringing in some of these players, though, because you want to try and immerse them within your squad for preseason. So you don't really want the Caicedo deals, whoever the new striker is going to be, to to prolong for another two to three weeks. Because you'd love to, I feel like this about Man United. I, I really do want like Hoyland as an example as well done in the next week, just like Arsenal have got done. You are now going to have your all three of your new star signings for the entire preseason, and I think that's gold dust. It's absolute gold dust. So there is an element of truth. They need to get it done. I think up until now, Kaiseido would have been away on in, after international break anyway, so he wouldn't have even been involved. You don't really want it taking more than another week after this. Otherwise, you just run into that realm of will he be ready to start the season? And I believe next year is going to be a very frenetic campaign where how quickly you start could be really important to your end position, if that makes sense. I think Chelsea also lack quality at this moment in time. So Caicedo is important for them to bring in because if Mm. they don't get Caicedo, who of that level of quality that's a DM can they bring in to play next to Enzo Fernandez? I really can't name too many. So they, it, it's imperative that they get Caicedo. If they don't get Caicedo, it could cause them a lot of problems and it could set them back because it's crucial you get the right partner for Enzo Fernandez. You don't spend this type of money on Enzo Fernandez and bring in anybody to play next to him. You need to have the right partner next to him to get the best out of him. Yeah, they do. I mean, they've got a bolster that midfield. Too many, So many players have left. It's very sparse right now. The one thing about Chelsea, there's that lack of experience. I'm really... Yes, they've got Sterling at the club, but Silver's there. You've got Chilwell and Reese James, and maybe I'm missing a, another player, but I do think they've got to add a little bit of a few older players as well. Almost, they need their own version of James Milner. Not James Milner in 2023, like 2017 James Milner, if that makes sense. Maybe a few players that can just come in and you know how we signed Casemiro, how they got Silver a few years back. I think they might need something like that, maybe. Um, you never quite know, but they've got a bolster that midfield as well. And they are looking to compete with you for Lavia. Hmm. And do you think, do you, where do you, where do you think Lavia is going to end up between the two clubs? Of course, Liverpool in the mix as well. Do you, do you feel like you've got the pool, the squad, the kind of status right now in the English game to beat Chelsea in that battle, Egal? Honestly, if Chelsea don't get Caicedo, it's a situation where Lavia might start at Chelsea and he'll go there. I think Lavia at this moment in time, he's looking at more where, where he can develop rather than where he's going to go and win. Because I don't know if he backs himself to say he's going to start at every club that he would go to. Say he goes to Arsenal right now with us having Declan Rice and potentially selling Thomas Partey. I think he would be great for us in the future, but I don't think he starts right away. I think he's going to be a part, bit part player here and there, rotation, part of the first team when we when we play when we when we're rotating and changing around when we have different tactics set up. But at Liverpool, if they do get rid of Henderson and thing, he'll start right away. At Chelsea, if they don't get Caicedo, he'd start right away. And at the age of 18, only having one season under your belt, if you can start at a top six club, I think he'd rather back back himself to do that then be a bit part player at Arsenal. So it's not even about pull at this point, because I do believe we have, at this moment in time, more pull than these other clubs. It's just, where would he go for his own development? That's what I think he's thinking. Would you rather keep Partey or sell him and sign Lavia? What would your preference be going into next season? Personally, for me, I keep Partey. I don't know why we we are, what, this obsession with getting rid of Partey. The club seems to want to get younger. There's been so many reports of the club wanting to sell Thomas Partey and bring in a younger body to make the midfield younger. We've already gotten rid of Xhaka. We brought in Declan Rice and, and, and Kai Havertz. Now, if we get rid of Partey, we'd be bringing another young midfielder. And the, the team, although it would be better in the future, in the short term, we'd actually be getting slightly worse, I believe, with... with uh, getting rid of Partey for Lavia. But it, if you look at it from this perspective that Lavia is an addition and Declan Rice is the actual Partey replacement, that's the way I think the club might be viewing it. But I don't view it that way. I think if we kept Thomas Partey, we'd be better equipped for the for the title race this season against Man City. And I, th- I still think Thomas Partey is a quality player, but I understand why they want to sell him. 
I just don't know if if it's the if it's if if it's the risk that's going to be worth a, a league title in the end. Yeah, look, I it's an intriguing one with with the Thomas Partey situation. If your manager is advocating it, I feel like there's an element of is there something we don't know? Therefore, should it be supported? But I understand the like I, I felt like Partey and Rice in the middle was formidable. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this year, from, yeah, go, on, go on, go on. We saw Thomas Partey and Balogun, and we go get Caicedo or somebody of that level, like a true mini. Then it makes sense. If we bring in Lavia in the short term, we've actually downgraded. Don't you agree? Yeah, La- yeah, Lavia's not on Partey's level yet. It, it's it doesn't make it doesn't make sense unless, like I've said, there's something going on behind the scenes that we're just not aware of you know maybe something that Partey said or did during that really bad period that you guys went through in the title race do you get where I'm coming from but you know I I totally get that uh Dan here says only way Caicedo doesn't join Chelsea is if they choose to walk away too much groundwork done Chelsea aren't pushovers this is true and they do want 100 million for him and those deals take a while to get done Dan Waters also said here Arsenal don't have more pull than Chelsea I think we do at this moment in time. I think what Chelsea have always banked on is paying more wages and paying more money for players. Just look at the Mudrick situation. We walked away from that deal. It's not even about pull sometimes. The way we realize pull is where the if we had two players that are going up against, we're both going up against, and we both wanted that player, let's be honest, and they both had, everything was the same, which club would they rather play for right now? I think Chelsea's very, un, there's a lot of unknown. There's a lot of question marks. And, if if you were to say to a player which player which club everything's the same which club would you go to I think they'd rather go to Arsenal at this moment in time because of our stability because of the fact that we're challenging for a league title because they know they're playing again with quality players who are across the board where Chelsea let's be honest we look at some of those players that you have in your squad we don't really know what direction you guys are headed in I know you guys are very young and you're only only up is where you guys can go but. I don't really think any player in world football is looking at Arsenal and Chelsea and saying Arsenal or Chelsea are in a better position to go to. And that's how I view Paul. I don't view Paul as a financial Paul because guess what? Financially, I think we both have money. We just choose to use it smartly in comparison to you guys. There we go. Um, but yeah, look, I think Chelsea will get the the, the Caicedo deal over the line. I do. I genuinely do. I, I don't think there's any concerns for them around that. Do you think they need a better striker? Do you think they've got this uh, this Jackson guy? But do you think they need a more prolific number nine if they're going to compete for the top four and win trophies next season? You know, Chelsea would worry me if they got a guy like, um, if they went and just spent the big money on Napoli's striker, Ozyman. If they went and got Ozyman, I'd be extremely worried. But the fact that they might be starting with Jackson or the fact that they might be trusting in Broha, Aubameyang's probably going to be leaving and 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 they're looking at potentially bringing Ivan Tony in January. Those kind of things. I don't, I I don't know if they're they might be struggling for the uh, in the, they might struggle in the first half of the season and then realize in January they need to bring in a big boy striker. And then if they do spend that money on Ozyman or Ivan Tony, I'll be more worried. If they don't, I really do think Chelsea are not really going to be a big threat to anybody besides like going challenge, trying to challenge for top four. So. Anything to stop them from getting Victor Ozyman, basically. Because <laughs> I view Victor Ozyman as a real deal. And if they get him, I'll be worried about Chelsea. For now, I'm not too concerned, Terry. Jackson, yeah, Jackson hasn't I'm... shown enough yet. I, I just don't know. I just don't know enough about him. The, the Jackson guy. He could he could he could surprise everybody. I mean, Broya could return from easy. I'm really intrigued to see in the Chelsea team next year. If he stays and if the football's better, is Raheem Sterling. Interesting, yeah. Because I still think there's a fairly good... Like, the guy will probably still miss five or six chances a year where you go, how did he miss that? Because he has a, a habit... I love Raheem Sterling, but he has a habit of missing goals that look really easy to score. But in a team where that ball is going across that six-yard box regularly, he, he was a master at Man City of being in the right place at the right time and scoring goals. System. And they just didn't do that last year, Chelsea. The amount of times they got that ball into the box and they either didn't shoot shot got blocked, or there was nobody making those runs to, to the back posts. If they can get that right this season, you may, again, you may get some goals from Broya, some goals from Jackson. But if somebody like Raheem Sterling could pick up 15 to 18 league goals through the team playing, and he's capable of doing it because he's done it before, mm. they may be okay without a brand new prolific number nine. But 
there's such a there's such an enigma. I, I feel um, Chelsea. I'm so intrigued to watch how they play because I don't want to rewrite history. I listened to what a lot of Don said on the Top Six show on fri- Friday, where yeah. he said actually we were really good in large parts of lots of games last year, but we'd miss chances, we concede a goal, then we'd get run through. And I'm not too sure if that's completely true. I think there's a little bit of rewriting history because there were some games where they were run through the whole match. Remember the Brighton games, as an example, Man United's games. But they did miss, in the Man United game as an example, so many chances, so many opportunities where if they start scoring some of them early next season, they could be a threat. Or, or, am, or, or am I deluding myself here, Gal? They still lack goals, Terry. That's why I'm saying if they bring in a Victor Eisenman, it's it's a really threatening team. And Kunku, Sterling, uh, Jackson, and who who's on their right? Would it be Matawake or would it be uh, the other guy? I forget his name. It uh, starts with a C. But I really do think Chelsea still lack goals. And if biggest thing Pochettino is going to have to do is if they change it back to a back four, he's going to have to find a way to get to get more uh, to get more uh, more opportunities for these guys in attacking issues because. They were playing a back three majority of their seasons, if I'm not mistaken. So changing the system where the wing backs are not going to be as involved in the attack, I want to see how these wingers actually get involved. Because there's been so much change over at Chelsea that we don't even know what they're capable of yet. So I can't write them off, but looking on paper, they don't have enough goals at this moment in time. 